That's our new leaders right there. Big University of Montevallo, 24-96. The University of Montevallo wins its third straight title. Hey there, everybody. Welcome into a new episode of the Rapala We Are Collegiate Bass Podcast. Today, we'll be talking with Blair Erickson and Jackson Pontius from number one ranked University of Montevallo. They got the win at the last Bassmaster College Series tournament that took place at Kentucky Lake. Blair, real quick, man, it's been just a couple weeks since y'all got that win. First and second for Montevallo at that tournament, which we'll talk about later as it pertains to the Bass Pro Shop School of the Year presented by Abu Garcia. Getting that victory, knocking off your teammates, who seems like have been winning about every tournament and won the Hartwell Slam just a week or two before that one. How cool was it to go out and get the major victory at Kentucky Lake? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, that's something me and Jackson have dreamed of forever. And uh, we're both three years into college fishing and have put our time in, so it felt really good to finally get that done. Obviously, Easton and Nick would have been very deserving of the win, but we're really grateful that they let us win that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you could say they let you win, but you earned it. You went out and did it. First place, 42 pounds, one ounce. Back-to-back -back days solid there at Kentucky Lake. Jackson, yep. talk a little bit about um, the victory as well for you, what it means for yourself and y'all's two-angler pairing as well as the team as a whole. Oh, it, it, it was just awesome. I mean, me and uh, – Blair, we haven't fished much together. I mean, that's that was our fourth big tournament that we fished together, and just getting some momentum like that going that quick. I mean, and then having to fish Gunnersville right after. I mean, it just it just gave us some great momentum. And I mean, winning something like that, I know it it lets you know, you know, hey, I can compete with these guys because I mean, these college guys, they're they're some hammers. I mean, it's not easy to win one of those deals or any 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 tournament that y'all put on whatever branch it is from but just to win one i mean it's so special and now we want to win another one so <laughs> a couple more opportunities left here on this season for our trail and a couple of the others as the school of the year race will wrap up there about the first week of june blair let's talk real quick man kentucky lake um a lake that the aca with the bass pro shops collegiate bass fishing series we visit each season for the bass pro shops big bass bash presented by berkeley and we've seen it through the last couple of years as the fishing's continued to get better and the smallmouth really starting to show out talk a little bit about just the fishery as a whole and what you saw that week there at kentucky lake yeah so uh, i have fished two of those big bass bashes and uh it seems like the smallmouth are definitely making a big comeback and it really showed at this Bassmaster event. So, um, you know, I wasn't surprised after our, our first two days of practice, how many big smallmouth were weighed in. It seems like there's a million three pounders out there right now and uh, really great potential for the lake coming up. Jackson, let's talk a little bit about the smallmouth, you know, having the history of fishing the Bass Pro Shops Big Bass Bash presented by Berkeley and just being out on the lake a couple of times like both of y'all have, do you do anything different to target the smallmouth or are they just showing up in the same places where you've always fished for largemouth? Oh, they, they're showing up a lot more. And, I mean, it really showed in this tournament. There was multiple six-pound smallmouth weighed in, and we had somebody on the team catch like a six-seven. And uh, – I don't know. I mean, I got straight back from Texas. I only had a day and a half of practice, and the first hour we caught 19 pounds so quick, and I was like, so this is what's happening here. And Blair was like, welcome to Kentucky Lake. And <laughs> I've always had a hard time catching good fish out there. I mean, I had – I got a second place in one of the periods in Big Bass Bash like two years ago or three years ago. But other than that, it's normally a pretty rough fishery, but the smallmouth has just been showing out. I mean, I, I was genuinely surprised how we caught them. And, I mean, most of the fish we caught that first day of practice, where they were all on bed. So we went back and caught them, caught them all again. And so, I mean, it was just it was just crazy how we found them. I mean, I was literally on the boat for 10 minutes, and we were catching three- and four-pound smallmouth. So, awesome. Let's get into some more of the specifics of how you were catching them. Blair, tell us kind of the areas you were focusing on, as Jackson mentioned, targeting bad fish as well. If that was kind of the primary pattern, what were you flipping in there to get those fish to bite? Yeah, so um, we actually did kind of the basic Kentucky Lake deal. 
Um, kind of coming off of your last question, we did catch some largemouth while we were smallmouth fishing, so they were kind of mixed in, but there was definitely more smallmouth um, in our areas. But we were just targeting bars out on, you know, the main lake of Kentucky Lake. It seemed like anywhere from four to that had to be set up and so you just had to spend a lot of time on side imaging idling around and then drop your live scope to try to catch them and uh with those deeper ones obviously you couldn't see them so live scope really came into play for those but i was just me personally i was just throwing a, a ned rig and the jig head i was using was an untamed tackle shiitake jig uh, it's just a little mushroom head style jig head with a a nice light wire hook in it and uh, just throwing little cross style baits on those beds. But the biggest thing with a bed fish, and it's like, you know, even though you can't see the fish visually with your eyes, you still got to have to imagine that they're down there doing the same thing. Like these fish don't actually really want to eat your bait, um, especially if they've been caught a couple of times. So, you know, that what we were doing a lot of times was just keeping our bait in that area, shaking it and uh, trying to just get them mad pretty much. Yeah, sight fishing, bed fishing during the spring, I feel like for tournament anglers, it can be a little nerve-wracking, right? You waste, not waste, you spend a lot of time on one particular fish, and if you, you know, you fish for eight hours a day, it takes you about an hour and a half to catch each one. You can catch five really good ones in a day, but if you spend that hour and a right. half and you don't get that fish to bite then you've really put yourself in a pickle. So Jackson is y'all committed to that pattern and went about it for two days. Talk a little bit about the mental aspect of knowing what you're doing. Obviously he said in practice in an hour, y'all caught 19 pounds. So you had confidence in it, but sitting there doing that for an entire tournament, it's kind of a risk reward, but here it paid off. Talk about how that plays into your psyche. Oh, it, it, it worked. It paid off amazingly. Uh, those, those small mouth, most of them were all fresh and they hadn't been messed with. And I'll also say uh, we weren't using panoptics. We were using perspective mode, and we wouldn't have caught them fish if we were using just regular panoptics. Perspective mode, you could just see the bed super good and see them swimming around. I threw a tube the whole time. He threw a Ned rig. He had two Ned rigs on. I had two tubes on. And most of them fish would bite within the first five casts. We caught multiple ones that we caught the first cast we threw in there. I mean – we caught one the first, I caught one the first cast the first morning, a four pounder. And, uh, actually Blair caught one like the last cast the second day, a three eleven, And that's what did it for us, uh, to end up winning. But we, we just spent all our time. He graphed, uh, for like two days before I was there and dedicated all his time to graphing and putting down the trolling motor and just going around and marking beds and catching some fish and knowing how big they are. And like, Hey, this one's a four pounder. This one's a three pounder. And, uh, we had two really good spots, but the, the main one we started at was right there close to the ramp. And then he had another one that was like 20 miles down the lake. And, uh, it just ended up paying, paying off. I mean, we, most all them fish, it didn't take us long to catch. We had one fish that I think we spent about an hour on and it was only, uh, I think it was like a three eleven that we ended up not catching. Uh, two days that we fish for i'm sure somebody fishing around us called them but that's the only one that we had marked that we did not catch in two days we're talking with blair erickson and jackson pontius from top rank university in montevallo got the win in the bassmaster college series event at kentucky lake with a two-day total of 42 pounds one ounce catching those fish using perspective mode on live scope as we've heard them talk about there blair now we talked about it there at the very beginning as I prefaced the first question or two. Montevallo went 1-2, earned the maximum amount of points at that tournament possible. We've already talked um, with Easton and Nick a little bit about that week because we had them on talking about the Hartwell Slam, of which we also talked about this tournament just a little bit where they finished second and you guys finished first. That's one of the yeah. few times as we were talking with them, I told them in my time here with the ACA, I've been here a little over seven years now, really tied into all this for about five or six that's the first – I think that's the second time um, that I can remember right off the top of my head in which a team has finished first and second to get maximum points at a at a double points major event. The other one was also Montevallo, I believe, at the Pickwick Slam mm-hmm. about two years ago. Talk about the significance of that, you know, finishing first, second, and getting maximum points. Is obviously, that's the goal for everybody going to a tournament, but to actually do it, that's that's a big deal. 
Right. Uh, I'm 99% sure that we did it at Ross Barnett for the Ross Barnett Rumble, too, uh, my freshman year. But uh, regardless, man, just to have that opportunity for both of us to do that well in that tournament and get first and second, um, you know, that means a lot. Um, We're sitting good in the points right now, um, but every point matters, especially with the format this year. So getting those high-placing finishes, top tens are huge, but when you can get a first and second, that really just, you know, kind of puts a statement on the weekend. Montevallo's season total right now, 33,605 points. Currently about a 4,400-point lead over second-ranked Carson Newman. And if I remember correctly, they've got one more Bassmaster event to earn points at here in the coming weeks. So if they get about 2,000 points, they would put you all with about a 2,400-point or so margin. So a couple thousand-point lead, most likely leading into the triple points Collegiate Bass Fishing Championship presented by Bass Pro Shops in just a few weeks. Jackson, talk about that. As Blair said, this year the race a little tighter. The points are continuing to just make this something that's going to come down to the very end and a chance for several different teams to be in play to finish in the top three or even win the whole thing um, when the season ends. So all that to be said, I'll circle back around, talk a little bit about the tightness of the race and how close it is, the margin between first and second and what that could mean come the end of the season. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't matter how big of a lead we got. It's it's not over yet. And that's that's a big thing our team strides on. I mean, we get these leads and we don't get comfortable at all because it comes down to the wire. And I mean, the points are always going to be close. And I think Carson Newman, I think their last tournament is coming up Sam Rayburn. I'm not sure. But I'm pretty sure that's their tournament that they got. And that's coming up. We're about to leave Sunday to go to that. And um, so it, we don't get points for that tournament, but I mean, we're going to go up there and try to, you know, block some points and have some teams try to do good to try to block some points for them and you know so it doesn't matter how big of a lead we got it's it's not over till it's over and uh, we can't get complacent and think you know hey we got this lead we can settle down we got to keep our gas on, foot on the gas and you know not get complacent and stay after it because it always every year I feel like it comes down to a couple hundred points and a couple hundred points are big so Last season, Montevallo achieved collegiate bass fishing history by being the first team to win three titles in the Bass Pro Shop School of the Year presented by Abu Garcia, doing it in three straight seasons. Meaning this year, if y'all were to do it again, that'd be four in a row and just continuing to increase that record for the total number of victories and consecutive victories in that School of the Year race. Blair, the significance of that, talk a little bit about it, how it's weighed on y'all this season, and to be able to achieve it here soon, what would that mean? Yeah, man. Um, so I've actually been at Montevallo for two of our three School of the Year titles, and each one's super special. But to get a fourth would just mean so much to us as a team. I know a lot of these freshmen that came in this year have been have put their head down and working. Um, and, you know, just all of us have been striving and working towards that goal. But I think it'd be pretty amazing for those freshmen that came in to be a part of something so special like a School of the Year and uh, obviously all of us upperclassmen are looking to just keep the hard work continuing and, and get it done again. But I was actually at uh, Hartwell last year for the national championship, and I didn't get to fish that tournament. I never qualified, um, but I actually drove down just because of how much that meant, you know, to be there and, and be there for the presentation if we want it. And, uh, you know, if, if that can happen again this year, uh, that would just be so amazing. And, uh, I think we've got a great shot at it, but like Jackson said, we got to keep the foot on the gas pedal and uh, just get her done. So, Jackson, same question, man. We're going to wrap it up right here. <clears throat> just your thoughts as well. If the season ends here in a few weeks, a little little less than a month now, and Montevallo is able to cap off its fourth straight Bass Pro Shop School of the Year presented by Abu Garcia title, what would that mean? What would the emotions be like for yourself and the team? Oh, it's, it, it means everything. I mean, that's, that's what we strive for. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's such a big deal. I've been here for four years. I'm actually going to stay another year and fish, but, uh, every year I've been here, we've won school of the year. So I'd like to like to keep it going with, uh, this, this last year, go ahead and win it. And, uh, I think it'll be hard. It'll be a record. That'll be hard to be beat for, for a while, a long time. I don't know if another school can pull something like that off. And uh, so it's just special. I mean, the group of guys we have, it's special. 
they uh they're all hammers they all fish hard i mean we that's 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 what we love to do so if we can pull this off again and get it done i mean it's going to mean everything for the team for everybody and so that's what we're hoping for so we just like like blair was saying we can't can't let up now and can't get complacent looking at our lead and thinking you know hey we got this because i mean it can change quick can change really quick and uh especially at at pickwick uh the triple points i mean it can it can change quick but i'm confident in the guys we got going up there to fish and i believe you know we should be able to get it done so That'll wrap up our conversation with Blair Erickson and Jackson Pontius from number one ranked University of Montevallo. Got the win in the Bassmaster College Series event last month at Kentucky Lake. Next thing for us here with the ACA and the Bass Pro Shops Collegiate Bass Fishing Series, as Jackson mentioned, the Triple Points Collegiate Bass Fishing Championship presented by Bass Pro Shops there at Pickwick Lake in Florence, Alabama. Be sure to check our website, collegiatebasschampionship.com, and over on social media for previews, content, everything coming up leading up to the tournament, during and after. So we're looking forward to all that. It's coming in just a couple weeks, guys. We'll talk to you all here on Down the Road. Safe travels and um, best of luck at your next events coming up as well. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Minnow King. How can I help you? Everything looks good. I'm friggin' starving, man. Been spawning all morning. Ugh, TMI, bro. What do you want? I'll take a Crush City Freeloader and Gizzard Shad. Anything to drink? Water. Pull ahead, please. Welcome to Minnow King. We're gonna have what he's had. Yeah, throw me in a Ned BLT, too. Pull ahead, please. Calm down, quit feeding him so much. Oh, yeah, man, I'm trying to, man, if you, if you, if you overfeed him, he's gonna hide under a log.